The beginning of a new year can often motivate us to set our sights on goals that are big and lofty, but don't align with the life we're actually living. While it's great to dream big and set our sights on big goals, we can often think, I'm gonna do a complete 180, I'm gonna work out seven days a week, and I'm gonna become the person that I have always dreamed of being. Unfortunately, most of us come into the new year with this mindset, and by February, we've given up on our goals. The better way to change our lives is to create small, sustainable habits in in our lives. These are a few of the changes that I have seen have the biggest payoff in my own life. When I was in college, I used to really struggle to keep my space clean. This left me feeling stressed and overwhelmed every time I needed to pick out an outfit or make a healthy meal. Eventually, I learned to implement the habit of doing the thing that your future self will thank you for. I knew that future me would be less stressed and more on top of things if I simply folded the laundry and did the dishes when I needed to. So I started asking myself, what would future me thank me for? And eventually, that spread to other areas of my life. I paid off debt because I knew that future me would be so great grateful for putting in the work now so that I could have more financial security in the future. I started working out because I knew that future me would have a longer, healthier, happier life if I did that now. I started focusing more in school because I didn't want to limit future me from going to grad school or getting the job that I wanted. You'll be amazed at just how much your current life can change by focusing a little bit more on future you. Looking into the future can help us make decisions about what we should be doing, but it can also inform us on what we shouldn't be focusing on. That's where the next habit comes in, and it's the five by five rule, which is if it won't matter in five years, don't spend more than five minutes worrying about it now. When I'm feeling stressed, overwhelmed, or angry, I always picture myself as an 80 year old woman sitting in a little rocking chair. I ask myself, would this matter to her right now? If I'm feeling upset at my husband for something small that he did or said, and I feel myself wanting to hang on to those feelings of annoyance, I asked myself, what would my 80 year old self want me to do? And I know that she would want me to spend every single second that I can loving the people that I care about most. I promise you that so many of the things that matter to us right now won't matter in five years, let alone 50. We live in a world that is consumed by consumerism. We're constantly told that the solution to all of our problems is more stuff. Don't like the way you look? Buy more makeup. Don't feel confident? Buy more clothes. Don't feel like your house looks like the aesthetic versions of people's homes on social media? Buy new home decor. The problem is, when we give into those answers, we're left feeling overwhelmed, surrounded by stuff, and stuck with the same problems that we started with. That's why I try to focus more on small moments rather than things. And what I mean by this is taking a step back and looking looking at the small moments in your life that are beautiful and trying to create more of those moments. If you start to feel the impulse to buy something to fix how you feel on the inside, take a moment and look at what is around you right then. I guarantee that there's something beautiful in your life that you're missing because you're constantly trying to buy more stuff to feel better. Notice the way that the sun pours into your room in the mornings or the way the blankets feel against your skin. Take a moment to actually smell your coffee or tea in the morning. Notice the small moments in your life and choose to craft more of those into your day. Listen to peaceful music on your drive into work and actually take the time to enjoy your breakfast before rushing out the door. These things will make your life feel more full than stuff ever could. The average American spends eight hours consuming content every day. Couple that with the demands of works, family obligations, and day-to-day -day responsibilities, and you have almost no time left with yourself. I'm not immune to this. I spend far too much time consuming content like podcasts, audiobooks, and YouTube videos. There's seldomly a moment of any day that I don't have a headphone in listening to something. But one thing that actually helps me to step back and connect with myself is journaling. Taking even just five minutes to write down what is going on in my head helps me to connect with myself. It helps me to tune out the outside world and understand what's actually going on inside of my head. It might feel awkward at first and you might not know what to write, but if you just set a timer for five minutes and write what is inside of your head, slowly you'll be able to connect more with what's actually going on. The more you get to know yourself, the easier it will be. Just try it out. I promise journaling is one of the best things that you can do for your overall health and well-being. 
a sedentary lifestyle more than doubles your chances of developing obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. I think we all know that we need to move more, but I think so many of us build it up to be something bigger than it needs to be. It doesn't have to be an hour long bodybuilding session in the gym. It can be something small like a five minute walk on your lunch break, standing up to stretch when you get a phone call, or switching to a standing desk at work. Small changes can make a huge impact on your longevity and how you feel every day. Start where you are, do what you can, and grow from there. Have you ever noticed the fact that you wake up in the morning in a house that is heated and air conditioned and then get in a car that is heated and air conditioned and then drive to work in a building that is heated and air conditioned? It's possible for most of us to go weeks without ever spending more than five minutes outside. And while I love the amenities of being able to stay warm in the winter and cool in the summer, never setting outside can actually have really negative effects on our well-being. Spending just 20 minutes outside has been shown to reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety. If you've ever spent any time outside enjoying nature, you know that this is true. To me, spending time outside is one of the best ways to notice those little things that I talked about earlier. There's so much beauty in the outside world, and by keeping ourselves cooped up indoors, we don't notice those things. Try taking your lunch break outside or going for a five-minute walk outside in nature when you get home, or going on a picnic on a Saturday morning and reading your book outside. You'll be truly amazed at how much stepping outside can boost your mood and make you happier. When I was struggling with severe anxiety in college, one of the first things that my therapist helped me do was learn to breathe. If you've ever struggled with anxiety, you know what it feels like to feel like your lungs are collapsing in on themselves and like you'll never be able to get a full breath of air in ever again. You can't think straight because it feels like there's no oxygen left. While I now thankfully don't feel that way every day, the necessity to stop and take a breath has never gone away. Incorporating breathing exercises into your daily routine can help you feel more grounded and relaxed. Try breathing in for a count of five and out for a count of five. Doing this even one time can make you feel more confident and relaxed. Don't discount the simple act of just breathing. I struggled with insomnia for most of my life. Even as a kid, the second my head hit the pillow, I was overwhelmed with thoughts of what I needed to do the next day, of some stupid thing that I said at school, and it felt like I could never escape the thoughts. One thing I've learned to combat that is brain dumping. Every night before bed, I take out a notebook and I write down the things that I need to do the next day and any thoughts that are plaguing me. This simple act of writing down what is on my mind allows me to fall asleep easier and not let those tasks slip the next day. This can be a great time to incorporate your journaling habit or just simply write down the things that are on your mind in that moment. Either way, don't let those thoughts stay in your brain. As always, I do wanna remind you guys that I do not do all of these things every single day. There are days where I don't do any of these things. The point, as always, is progress over perfection. Doing just one of these habits consistently will improve your life in ways that you can't even imagine right now. Start where you are, do what you can, and build from there. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure that you subscribe. I would love to continue growing with you in this new year. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.